Hello everyone, welcome back to another Sup Border review video. My name is Ruben and I'm going to talk you through today the Sandbank style sports touring board. Definitely a very reasonably priced board. It retails as a complete package at £569. And it is going to suit a lot of people that want to get in the fast touring type of paddling this year. The full specifications for this board, it's 12 foot long and it's 30 inches wide. It's 6 inches thick and the volume is 297 litres. When we weighed it, it weighed 10.22 kilograms or 22.50 pounds. And it comes with a single easy fit centre box fin. So remember, this is a standalone ice up review. So we are going to be reviewing it by transporting it to the beach, telling you how comfortable the bag was, telling you how easy it took the board and the complete package in the bag, what it's like to inflate, what it's like to put all together to get you on the water, obviously what it's like to paddle on the water and then packing it up and transporting it back home. And then looking at the brand, looking at the warranty, looking at the environmental awareness of the brand and giving you the pros and cons and finishing off who would best suit this board to help you understand if this board is right for you. So first off, transporting to your paddle location, this board in the backpack. The backpack itself actually feels and weighs like a fairly heavy duty backpack. Well made, the stitching all looks good, the padding around the shoulder is fairly comfortable. It does have a little bit of padding around the back area and you can take your shoulder straps off and tuck them inside the back of the backpack. So if you are traveling on a plane and you're wanting to get the shoulder straps out of the way, you can also tuck those shoulder straps out of the way. And then obviously you can use the wheels, which are then fitted on the bottom. So all in all, actually, it's a pretty good bag that comes with the price point of the package. And definitely, if you want to be traveling overseas or you want to be using it as your everyday ice up bag, it's definitely going to be fine for using for that. When it comes to inflating the sports touring board, this is a really big thumbs up from us. It comes with a very good quality pump. It comes with a Bravo Super Pump, which is personally one of my favorites pumps out there. We've tested lots of other pumps on the market and that definitely is one of the pumps that stands up and it's easiest to use for a lot of different people. If you're unaware of the Bravo Super Pump, it's a two-way pump which means it pumps on the upstroke and on the downstroke and then when the pumping gets hard you can turn the lever over at the back of the pump and you can just pump on the downstroke. It also has an inflation and deflation setting which is also great. And all the fittings are definitely well made and they have lasted. We've still got a Bravo Super Pump that we've had from our very first review a few years ago and it's still going strong. When it comes to inflating this board, as I said, it's really easy to do with the Bravo Super Pump. It's still going to take you a little bit of time because it is a fairly big board, but definitely I haven't had a problem pumping up with that pump. The PSI pressure that you can get in this board is quite a big range. They recommend 18 to 20 PSI, but it has a maximum pressure of 25 PSI. So this shows the board can take a lot. And also let's talk about the construction of the board then. The board has an internal chamber of drop stitch, but outside of that, it's got two layers of fully laminated PVC and it's got a center fiber mat, which gives the board a lot more strength. I know sandbanks are reducing a lot of their glues now in their products and they're trying to use a lot more heat and pressure to get the boards a better quality, but really to reduce the environmental use of glue and to reduce the amount of glue in these boards in general. So a great thing about the environment, but we'll speak about more of that in a minute. But any board that takes up to 25 PSI and is recommended to that stands up as a good board that's well made. When you pump the board up, all you've got to do is turn it over and slip the fin in. It's a very quick and easy fin box system to use. You slip the fin in, you knock it down and you slide it to the back. It's a quick fix fin box and we used it on several other boards before and we haven't lost or damaged any fins yet using it. Carrying the board to the water, well you haven't got lots of handles, you've only got your single central carry handle because the board is fairly light, it's easy to carry and the carry handle is in the middle of the board so it's nicely balanced, not too far at the front and not too far at the back. And nothing I'll remind you about, remember if you're carrying any 6 inch thick board, it is going to be further when it's under your arm. So you're going to have a bigger board under your arm opposed to the 4.75 inch thick boards which we reviewed from Sandbanks style last time. A much more comfortable, more slim line board to carry under your arm. Just something to be aware about, your 6 inch board will stick out further in your arm. So if you've got smaller arms or those smaller paddlers, the thinner boards in thickness will be easier to carry. When you get to the water's edge, if you do want to put cargo onto the front under the bungees, you can do that and you're going to have to use the leash to pick up the board and slide it into the water. So there is no rear carry handle at the back there, which would be nice. Maybe that's something in time that sandbanks can look at adding. 
to, just before you get on the water, obviously you're going to put together your three piece paddle. The boards all come as standard with a fiberglass three piece paddle. That's a fiberglass shaft with a plastic blade. So it's a pretty hard wearing paddle that a lot of people are gonna be able to use and it's still gonna take the knocks of being dragged and pushed around the beach and pushed off of rocks. But you can also upgrade to a full carbon paddle for an extra hundred pounds. And definitely if you're going to be paddle boarding lots and you can afford it, going for the upgrade for that carbon paddle will make you be able to paddle further, less effort, and it's just basically gonna be a nicer paddle to use in general. Before you get on the water, you're gonna put on your leash, it comes with a branded up black coiled leash. We've seen this same quality of leash on way more expensive board packages, so it definitely is nice to see this leash in with this package price point. Okay, moving on to what the sports touring board is like to paddle. Well, first off, if we look at the shape of the board, it's a very long and slender shape. 30 wide in the middle, 12 foot long. So it's gonna be a smooth and easy board to paddle. Has a nicely pulled in tail shape, still a little bit of width at the tail there. So it's a good stable platform, but definitely has a nice amount of glide to it. It really does feel quick under your feet and it feels very responsive with every paddle stroke. The stability of the board feels absolutely fine. It's not gonna be as stable as a 32 wide board, but for a 30 wide board, it feels fairly stable. And it's definitely nothing that I've noted that needs to be talked about. If you are a heavier paddler, 95, 90 kilos plus, obviously this board is gonna be a little bit more unstable, but it's nothing more unstable than other 30 wide boards on the market. It's got a small bit of nose rocker there, which is great when you're popping over little bits of chop, little waves. Really the overall outline of this shape of this board, which is nose rocker at the front there, flat towards the tail, is what you want for paddling quickly. Definitely the board generally feels very comfortable to paddle. I was a little bit surprised how fast this board paddled and how light it felt under your feet. It feels very responsive to paddle. And I think it's definitely just due to the rocker line, the width of the shoulders and the nice slowly tapering back shape towards the tail. It still offers you enough width just near the back section. So if you want to get into step back turns and maneuvering the board a bit more, it will pivot on the tail nice and easily. You have got the EVA raised heel pad at the back there you can foot your foot against which does make it better when you're step back turning to know where your foot is because really right at the back of the board where they've placed it is the sweet spot of where you want your back foot when you want to pivot on the tail if you're talking about going in a straight line because it comes with a nice fin in the center fairly far back on the board so you are going to find your swapping paddle sides less which means then you're going to be paddling further for less effort because the package comes with a fiberglass paddle, you are still going to get quite a lot of response with that as well. Obviously not as much as the carbon paddle, the stiffer the paddle shaft, the more power you're going to be able to put into that paddle and the faster you're going to go. But it's nice it comes with a fiberglass paddle opposed to a cheaper aluminium paddle. Other stuff that you can use when you're paddling this board, you've got your bungee straps up at the front. It's a standard thing and it's a moderate size bungee strap at the front that you can get a good sized dry bag on. Back from that, you've got a large EVA deck pad. It is a very comfy deck pad on these sandbank setups, and it's nice that it's fitted right up to the side of the board, and it's quite far forward as well, so if you are trimming your weight for the forward, if you're paddling upwind, you have got a large amount of deck area for that. In the middle, obviously, you've got your central carry handle. It's a neoprene wrapped or webbed carry handle inside. Comfy, not massive, so it doesn't stick up and get in the way. And right at the back of the board, as I said, you've got the EVA raised kick pad. The board itself is finished off, this one in the Maui graphic. Sandbank style definitely have worked a lot more on their graphics over the last few years. It was one of the major negatives when we first reviewed one of their boards a few years ago, how it looks a bit boring and a bit dull, but they really have worked a lot more on the graphics these days. And I know a lot of you out there who own these, these boards are really happy with them and select these boards because of the graphics. Other stuff on the board, you've got your leashing point at the back there and you've also got a towing eye under the nose of the board. One thing we've got to speak about is the stiffness of this board because when you're paddling this board, this board does feel very stiff under your feet. And yes, it has a recommended PSI of 18 to 20 PSI, which a lot of you will use and pump it up to, but we also tested it at 15 PSI and it felt absolutely fine. So a lot of you moderate weight paddlers out there, you're probably just gonna pump it up to 15 PSI, maybe even 12 PSI and go paddling. Obviously the more PSI you put in your board, the stiffer it is going to be. We did do this board through our deflection test, which is what we do on all our inflatable paddle boards. We put it on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and then we put a weight of 75 kilograms in the center, and then we measure how much the board bends or deflects. At 18 PSI, it dropped 13 millimeters, so that is a really 
quite a stiff board, some of the stiffest boards on the market, which are double the price and a bit more than this, sit around seven, eight millimeters, and some of the most flexible are around 25, 26, 27 millimeters. We also pumped this up then to 20 PSI and did the same test, and we actually got the same result, or a result that's so hard to tell if there's any difference, it's not really worth reporting about. So that two PSI difference for us didn't make a massive difference, but if you went on to the 25 PSI, no doubt this board would be stiffer. And definitely from 15 to 18 PSI, you are gonna see a bigger gain of stiffness as well. So definitely recommend heavier people always trying to get up to the 18 or 20 PSI, but for the lighter paddlers, you won't need to go up to that 18 PSI. And I personally think 15 PSI, you will be quite comfortable on this board if you're sub 75 kilos. When it comes to packing this board up, it's a very quick and easy board to deflate and roll up for a couple reasons. One is there is one valve at the back of the board, you undo that and then you can roll the air out really quickly. The second point is it's got a foldable fin box which means when you roll it nice and tight, the fin box rolls around the board, doesn't stick up or bend. The nice thing about having that fin box on an inflatable paddle board is you don't have so much fatigue on the corners of your fin box which is gonna bring down the warranty potential in years to come. You could also use the pump to deflate and suck the air out if you wanted to, if you're packing it down maybe to go on an airplane. So definitely not a hard board to pack up and it's very easy to fit all in the bag. So a bit more information about the brand, about the environmental awareness of the brand and the warranty. Sandbank SUP have been going on for a few years now. They're a family run business on the south coast of the UK. They have been selling a lot of paddle boards over the last few years and a lot of you have got on the water using their boards and we're hitting a lot of very good feedback from you all about them and the customer service, which is really important for us to know what these products are like. I mean, we can give you a review of the product, but really we don't know what the full after service is like until you actually tell us. So thank you very much for giving us all your great feedback from all your brands and especially from Sandbanks. They're definitely a brand that does listen to their customers and we've said things in the past and they've already improved on them. One of the things was we were talking about environmental awareness and basically packaging with your ISUPs. They've already reducing the amount of plastic in their packaging, which is great to see. So now the paddles are wrapped in paper. The boards are still wrapped in plastic, but they've told us that they are changing that. So they are pushing towards the right direction. And also they've told us that they are starting to use recyclable based materials in their products, but they're not quite ready to put them into market yet. So it's really nice to see them pushing into the environmental side of the inflatable industry. And also looking at lifespan of their inflatable paddle boards, they've come up with a number of 20 years. They recommend that these ISAPs will last 20 years. Obviously we haven't had 20 years of use out of them since they've been making them, but they've talked to a lot of their sub schools and how much they've been using them, what sort of conditions they've been using them, and calculated from there that 20 years of use should be what we would expect as a general public to get out of a ball like this. 20 years is a good amount of time, and I guess because of that, they offer a three year warranty as standard on all their boards against the materials and the manufacturing process, but you can also opt for an extra five year warranty as well. So they definitely really are trying to look after you for years and years as a Sandbanks customer. So now let's finish off with pros and cons, value for money and who will best suit the Sandbanks sports touring. Well pros, definitely the value for money we've got to speak about here. You get a lot of board or a lot of good package for your money, good quality package. The pump is a very the, one of the best pumps on the market if you ask us. The paddle it comes with is good quality and you've got the option of upgrading to the carbon. The bag is pretty heavy duty, not the most padded, so for long, long distance carrying it, it's not gonna be the most comfortable, but it does look like it's gonna last and it's not gonna start ripping at the seams. And definitely the ethos behind the company and the way that they're recommending that you can pump this board up to 25 PSI and has a recommended pressure of 18 to 20, says a lot of good things about the construction and the materials that they're putting into this board. I like to see a company that really stand by what they say and also by them having three year warranties as standard and an optional five year warranty, it does really say that you are gonna get a good quality value product in the Sandbanks Sports Touring. And cons, and it's a con that all six inch thick boards have 
Couple things, when you're paddling a six inch stick board, apart from when you're carrying it down to the water, it sticks out on your arm further. When you're climbing back on the board, you might find it harder, especially if you've got a buoyancy aid because you're higher out of the water. Again, this is a con for all six inch stick boards. This is something just to make you aware of. And definitely when you're paddling it, you are higher out of the water as well. So you might find that you don't feel so attached to the sort of paddling experience opposed to if you are on a five or 4.75 inch thick board. And as I said, it could do with an extra handle at the back. And if you're really looking at this for more touring, extra bungees at the back or to even the bungee points so you could add your bungees would be great at the back of the board there. So who do we think this board will best suit? Well, definitely for somebody who wants to paddle further, faster, and probably for a little bit longer. We've already heard of people winning on this actual board in races, so you could even take this racing. Definitely somebody who wants to paddle around the corner, paddle a little bit further, put a bit more weight on the front of the board. You could do little overnighters with this. You haven't got any rear bungees, so you're not gonna be able to load it up that much, but you could use this, as they say, as a sports touring board. It has a wide range of uses, but definitely something that involves paddling further and faster. Weight range of paddler, yes, you will be able to paddle this as a smaller person, but really it's gonna come into its own from about 65 kilos up to 95 kilos. It could possibly take a bit more weight than that, but if you're heavier than that, you'll probably want something a little bit wider. Definitely if you wanna use it with a bit of cargo on the front, somebody sitting up to 90 kilos would be really comfortable on this board. And definitely with a good bit of paddle stroke, and a good bit of technique, you are gonna be able to paddle fairly far with the Sandbank Sports Touring Board. So there we go, hope you found that SUP board review interesting and informative and it's helped you understand if this board is right for you. Any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you've got loads more questions about this board or comparing it to other boards, send us a SUP board a pro email and we'll happily help you work out which board is exactly right for you. Of course, if you're getting into SUP and you wanna find out more about paddleboarding, check out SUP board and mag if you're not on that already. And of course, if you're mad keen on SUP and you wanna absorb as much information as possible, get yourself on Subwater Pro. There's loads more content on there that you don't see on YouTube. But until next time, check out Sandbanks Style if you're interested in this board, and we'll see you on another Subwater video.